All right, what's going on, everybody? You already know who it is. Back at it again with the E3 press conference review. Here with my boy 3MG. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy 3MG here, back again. All right, so now we're going to review EA's press conference. So uh, I think the biggest thing that EA showed was uh, Battlefield 1. That's the probably the most anticipated title. Um, so one of the key things they highlighted about Battlefield 1 is going to have improved uh, destruction because the past two Battlefield games, Hardline and uh, 4, kind of lacked on the destructibility and that's what the Battlefield series is really known for. So, you know, it hasn't really been um, the true destruction since Battlefield Bad Company 2. And also, also there's going to be dynamic weather effects. Sir, what do you think about Battlefield 1? It's freaking awesome. It looks freaking awesome. Yeah, um, with Battlefield 1, honestly, that was like one of my most hyped games to see come out this year. So being able to try the game out, I thought it was amazing. Um, definitely has like a Star Wars, like BG uh, mentioned, a Star Wars Battlefront feel, the textures and all that. Uh, personally, I think the game will have some success to it. That was really my most amped up game of this year and of EA Play, the, the actual conference. But what did you feel about the overall online experience when hands on? Uh, so we got to play a little bit of Battlefield 1. Not too much. Um, I think it's they're capturing it right. I think uh, 4 and Hardline, especially Hardline, was definitely a misstep in the franchise, but I think they're returning to what truly makes uh, Battlefield, Battlefield. So definitely anticipating this title coming out uh, this fall, October. I can't remember the exact October release date. October 21st or 20th. I know you get it like seven days early with EA Access. Obviously with Battlefield 1, there was a lot of skepticism um, about you know the whole concept of going back to World War One because it's usually a time period that developers stray away from but they're taking a few liberties um, and freedom with developing the game when it comes to weapons so that it's not really tied down too much by reality so yeah Battlefield 1. Battlefield um, 1 what else we have next we had Titanfall 2 right um, one of the things they announced was the actual single player being introduced into the game. I mean, I don't know how I feel about it. It's cool to see that they're gonna, they have a dedicated single player, but I personally feel like the focus should have been on multiplayer. Um, what do you feel about the single player being announced? Uh, I don't really feel like it was needed. Um, I think it's one of those things that people complain about just for the sake of complaining, but don't really want that much. Because they're, let's be serious, Respawn is not about single player compelling stories. So that I highly doubt that they're gonna deliver upon that. Um, most likely it's just, it's, I, I, I doubt it's even going to be like a 10 hour campaign. Maybe like something you can run through in six, seven hours. So people are really complaining about and demanding something that they're really not going to get, uh, you know, a real, um, full fledged story on. It's probably going to be, you know, some bullshit that they kind of threw together for a single play player campaign. You know, it, it is what it is, but people complain about things that, you know, you're not going to get the best quality of no i mean one of the things they didn't mention aside from the single player and the multiplayer i think they're going to announce three to six uh new mechs that they introduced into the multiplayer they have some grappling hook um mechanics that they will have for anyone who goes up in the air i think you've mentioned um before that they had said any, something about uh for mechs they have like this new kind of class or yeah there's uh three new uh types of mechs like you said there's going to be a uh, customization um there's, you can Some customize that they're gonna have right right new weapons of course you can customize your skins and everything like that so uh you know all the all the things that people wanted um in the first game they've approved approved upon um in this one grappling hook i think there's going to be more anti uh pilot weapons because and a, a problem in the previous game was actually sometimes shooting um pilots because they were so small when they ejected out of their uh, Titans. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool. I mean, moving forward, hopefully Titanfall 2 has um, some success and hopefully the single player has more depth than what was already exposed to us here at EA Play. Right, so they also mentioned there's going to be a progression system um, and they've definitely improved on the sound effects of the weapons and the, the game in its entirety. Uh, next thing, uh, there's sports, of course there's sports division, NHL, even though they didn't mention NHL, of course there's a new NHL coming out this year. Madden and FIFA. Well, just a quick, like even 10 seconds, Madden was announced. They showed off Madden. They didn't really mention much about Madden 17, but they didn't show much on it. The focus was really about um, FIFA 17, which you want to talk a little bit about it? I mean, I'm not a f necessarily a FIFA player. It's arguably the best 
um, sports, sports game out. Sports game, sports front, sports game market. that EA works on. Um, because, you know, they're pretty stagnant with Madden. With Madden, it's like two steps forward, five steps back because they are constantly um, adding um, features every year every, for every Madden, but also remove some of the best features. So you never really get a, a great comprehensive experience. Yeah, one of the cool things I've heard about FIFA, because I myself, I've played FIFA multiple times, um, never been an in-depth player or a competitive player of FIFA, but they did introduce this new um, single player journey, um, campaign called The Journey, which introduces a character called Hunter. You play as Hunter throughout this whole experience, and you get to have like your own lifestyle in this game. So you get to live the life of a certain character. Hopefully that's um, it has some depth to it. It reminded me of like Fight Night Champion, in which had like a dedicated story. So I thought that was pretty cool that EA is bringing story back to their sports games. I think they should have that with more of their sports games, but they have more competitive um, components and competitive mechanics introduced into FIFA 17. I think it's going to be well received. Hopefully, you know, it comes out and everything's going to be awesome. Right. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be their first time introducing story to, to FIFA. So that should be cool. Um, now, next we had uh, Mass, Effect Mass Effect Andromeda. It's one of those games that a lot of uh, people look forward to. Um, it has a huge audience. Me, myself, not a personal fan. I played Mass Effect 2 and 3, never played the first one, but not my type of game. I personally found found them boring. Um, I would be willing to give Andromeda a try because I'm pretty sure it might it might take place after the events of 2 or 3, but not maybe not a, it's not a direct sequel. Um, but I don't really think I probably need to give it a try because it's going to be the same gameplay in 2 or 3. And if I didn't enjoy 2 or 3, I probably won't like Andromeda. But I definitely give the game credit for what it is. It's a good quality game for the people who like it. Well, I haven't really tried a Mass Effect game, but seeing that it's its fourth installment, I understand that there's a huge audience out there. I'm glad to see that the franchise is still going in. And to see that they're going to introduce it, I might try it, to be honest with you, just because of the hype around the current gen and PC style. So, yeah, I will be touching this game, getting a little bit feel of it. Never really got into 1, 2, and 3 at all. But still, I'm going to wait to see what else is going to be in store for this game. Like we said, we only seen CG, so there wasn't really much to offer to us. But hopefully in later months we see some more gameplay. And I believe they said it's to release next year, 2017. And uh, then uh, EA, of course, is going far in they're putting all their cards in with the star wars game so uh, if i'm not mistaken they have three star wars games in development one yes. by respawn one by jade raymond's uh respawn I, entertainment they have one visceral by jade raymond's visceral games and one still by la dice which is coming out next year right so they're definitely uh you know putting all their cards on these uh, star wars games especially after the after the uh success of star wars battlefront they did introduce um the what well, Immediately, we actually saw space battles um, for the new Star Wars Battlefront being introduced, so I thought that was pretty awesome. And the one by Respawn Entertainment is actually going to be a third-person adventure, um, so I thought that was pretty cool, too, that they're having their own twist. And well, I forgot her name, but um, the one leading Visceral Games, she led one of the teams. Amy Hennig? Amy, Amy Hennig is leading the team in story for um, Visceral Games in the next Star Wars, which is releasing in 2018, so I'm hyped to hear about that, too. Right. So, and lastly... Uh, we're going to touch on EA Originals, which is uh, EA's, platform, EA's for platform for indie devs uh, to help them fund and develop uh, their games and, you know, bring their ideas to fruition. And they, the first game that they showed um, from EA Originals is Fee, which was very reminiscent of like a dark version of Journey Unravel. or Unravel. Right. It has so much depth to it. Actually, um, they were talking about the sound, the soundtrack, the emotion that you will get from this game that you will re be receiving. Um, honestly, I'm, I'm actually happy to see that there's more studios opening up to indie developers. It's not just the two main corporations, which is Microsoft and Sony. And I'm glad to see that. They announced that all the funding will be put back into the development of these um, studios, indie development studios. So I'm glad to actually hear that. Um, I want to see what's more in store for the game fee. It looked very interesting. Right. And uh, they're definitely doing what they need to, to uh, EA is doing what they need to, to diversify their lineup because, you know, they had the shooters, the sports games, but, you know, now they're finding treasures in these uh you know, indie uh, platformers. Definitely a great investment that they have for um, indie developers. I mean, honestly, I think indies um, don't really have a huge crown on their on their head. I think they deserve more credit. Um, we have received a lot of indie games that became that become, became mainstream, such as like Outlast and Rocket League. So I'm so hyped to see what's going to be brought next. Ooh, how you doing? 
We had a little cameo from uh, little cameo. Dead by Daylight, baby. From Dead by Daylight. Thank so uh, that was awesome. Actually. That that was that was a great featurette right there. Um, <laughs> So overall, though, how do you feel about so overall EA's, like, EA's press conference? I liked it. It was it was good. It was solid. Not the best. Definitely far from bad. Um, and you know, out in on my list, I have it uh, that they came in third. Yeah, I think they came in third. They were pretty safe with what they um, announced. I think it was pretty cool that they announced uh, more games in the future. I mean, like we said before, they have such a tough lineup. Um, hopefully, we see more information, more gameplay on Mass Effect and games like Fee and what other games are going to be brought to EA Originals. Last thoughts on EA? They did a good job. No that's it. That's it. All right, cool. So that's our EA review. Thanks for watching. We out of here. Peace. Peace out.